Hey wonderful people and welcome again back to the workshop. I'm still having a lot of fun with the engine DIY retro hot bulb engine. I don't think it is a hot bulb engine as it says in their description. I think it's just a four stroke petrol engine model and it's it's jolly good. Let's start it up and let me tell you about a few things that I found that you need to know if you want to get one of these fine models. So I start mine with a drill I'm powering mine with a power supply. Let's see if it starts. So yes, it starts really easily and it runs well. Bit of smoke, filthy, because, you know, it's basically a total loss engine. Oh, it quits. Let's talk about that. <laughs> A very nicely built engine, let down, I'm afraid, by a couple of things. The first is it has far too simple a carburetor. If only it had air and mixture control, which was more complex. All it's got is a Venturi sucking in air and a needle. Uh, I'm continually losing uh, fuel pressure because the fuel drains back into the tank. So almost every run, I have to check that there's no air in the fuel line. Uh, the fuel tank has to have the lid on, but it's not vented. So you can imagine there's a problem with uh, fuel supply. I think that needs to be sorted out. It, the tank almost needs to be pressurized. The Venturi doesn't always suck up and keep the head of fuel. And you notice in this clear plastic bit, the fuel level drops to the point where the engine isn't sucking any fuel and won't run. The second thing that I have modified, which is great, is the water tank. The return to the water tank is really near the top. And when it's running, water was splashing out all over my desk and losing the water, which is vital for the jacket cooling. So I made a simple aluminium turning uh, cap for the top of the water tank. Much better. Keeps the water level. The other thing that I'd like to say is I've had massive problems with, and that is the ignition system. Um, it just quit. I mean, I just couldn't get it to work. I tried various um, input voltages from the power supply. It runs from six to 12 volts. If I upped it to about 12, occasionally I'd get a spark, but it was intermittent. I assume that the Hall effect sensor, this is a sensor that picks up a rotating magnet, which triggers uh, a signal to the ignition system to make a spark was faulty. But no, I tested it. It seems absolutely fine. You can rotate the engine, you get a signal from the Hall, uh, effect sensor every time the magnet goes past it. So that was working. What I discovered <laughs> was two very strange things. First of all, these Musa power supplies, these little boxes you get with it, uh, with your kit, only work if they're facing upwards with the word Musa or the main label that you get. I mean, you might get a different one facing upwards. If you have it upside down, which, well, you know, it's easy to do, just resting somewhere on the bench. I found mine didn't work. Uh, why? And the other thing is double check that you've got the trigger wires the right way around. Uh, this one came with white, red and black. And there's a white, red and black coming from the Musa ignition unit. Make sure that they're right way around. But I found this really odd thing. Now, I don't recommend this. In fact, I think what I did might have broken the ignition. I accidentally put the wires on this plug, which isn't uh, keyed in any way, the wrong way. So black was facing white, you know, it's just upside down and it worked. <laughs> oh, I immediately stopped and put it back and it ran much better. It was as if by putting it in upside down temporarily, don't do this. I'm just saying I did it by accident and it seemed to do something weird. It charged up and unlocked my ignition unit. Now, it's probably the best way of breaking it. So don't do that. But in my case, just for a second or two, I had it the wrong way around and it seemed to reset the ignition and also putting it the right way up really has helped. It makes a good spark. I have to say right now, that this engine literally is a joy. I 
make films on the internet. I have to deal with YouTube. I have to deal with difficult viewer questions. And I come down here to my workshop, which I love because I'm a hobby engineer. And having this engine purring away like a kitten in this workshop for five minutes really is good for my mental health. I really enjoy it. It's actually a fun object to own. I would say it's actually quite important to own. If you're the kind of person who likes to see a piece of well-made engineering ticking like a cat, purring on your desk and just working out of the box as well, this is the engine for you. It's got one or two little issues. It runs super, super rich. The way that it runs so slowly is because it's running inefficiently. If you lean the mixture, it runs better, but it runs super fast and it's less attractive. You want it to go kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. And to do that, you just richen it. And look at how filthy the model is. It's kicking out exhaust smoke. I use a mixture of 95 octane gasoline or petrol here in France, and I mix it with uh, just a drop of Marvel Mystery Oil to lubricate the cylinder and the valves. And that seems to work, but it does kick out um, black oily tar in my workshop. Um, I'm not down here very long for the people who think I'm going to die from carbon monoxide poisoning. Really, it's tiny and the workshop is very big and there's open doors and windows, so it's fine. I, although I would probably recommend if you run it for a long time to do it outside. And you can do that on a 9 volt battery. But overall, with a few little flaws, I think the fuel line <coughs> would be better to be replaced. It'd be, it'd be great if the fuel system was pressurized, maybe higher up, so you've always got a head of fuel going to this very simple carburetor. But that carburetor is the one thing that I would change engine DIY shop. I'd actually put on a much better one, you know, with butterfly valves and proper venturis and, you know, a, a bowl and a filter and all that, just like a simple carburetor on a lawnmower or something. The one supplied with the engine is far too simple and makes it run far too rich. It's so inefficient and it's so difficult to control. It needs to be better. Also, you know, get a piece of wood, turn a piece of aluminium and make a cap for the water tank. But when it runs, let's try it again. It runs just like a dream. Let's see, this is genuine, no editing. It's good. You know, why does it stop? It stops because the carburetor isn't good enough. It needs to have more air and a dialed in mixture. And the poor thing is struggling because it's running so rich. It's kicking out all this smoke and fumes and oil because it's desperately trying to breathe and it's not breathing. Uh, in this case, the fuel is still up into the carburetor, which is great, but you heard it ran super rich, then it ran super slow, and then it quit. Um, keep fiddling with it. You will get it running nicely, but at its best run with this setup, with the fuel being unpressurized and the carburetor being so simple, you really are going to be running it super rich. But when it does run, it really is a joy. Let's have another go. By the way, I'm using a drill to start. The starting handle really, you'd have to give it a lot of welly to start it. A drill is much better. That seems to be going well. You can hear that sweet spot where it uh, keeps on picking up, keeps on sucking fuel, and keeps on firing a bit. Now it wants to quit. That's the joy of model engineering, making something so well built, but needs tweaking. I do recommend it. It will run out of the box, but it does need a few tweaks. Good luck.